Hey guys, time to sell up great. No pre-lesson for this. This is just straightforward. So, dot product. See that big old dot right there? Do not get that confused with like three times two is six. These are not the same thing. This is a massive thick dot. So is that, so is that, so is that. So, what do you do when you see this? Well, first of all, it's saying vector u is a b in component form vector v is c d and that's in component form so you're just going to take a times c the first piece in each I already messed up humanity gets and you just multiply them together and then you add these things b times d you're just going to get a number. Now, I want you to see something. You see this formula on the back side? We're going to find the angle between two vectors using this formula. And you can see that there's a dot product in that formula. So this is, again, I always refer to meat and potatoes. This is the meat and potatoes. But we obviously need to know how to do this before we can actually use this formula. So, find each dot product. Well, here's my first piece in each component vector, just multiply them together, and I'm going to add these together. Boy, do you guys want a bunch of these on your tests and quizzes, don't you? Look at all the space we have. It's intimidating, but nope, it's that easy. So this times this is negative 4, plus this times this is negative 6, so my dot product is negative 10. That'd be my answer. All right, now they got to throw these I's and J's at us, and this is what's nice to know. There is a little invisible one there. Now, remember what I taught you to do. You just kind of drop the I's and J's. That's what it is. Times the dot product of 3, comma, negative 5. Okay? If that little jump from here to here and from here to here is losing you, just see me. And uh, I can explain it. I did explain it in a pre-lesson. But every now and then, it's just kind of, just feels weird to do that. But let's stick with the program. 6 plus negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. So I get 11. There's my dot product. Now let's put this dot product to use. Now I do want you to really emphasize, I want you to see something. This is the angle between two vectors on the top of page 118. And on the previous assignment, I want to show you guys something. Sorry, I'm leaving this. On the previous assignment, I introduced you to this. And this is the angle. This is a formula that helps you understand the how far you spun the vector to get in that certain spot. So this is just the, the spinner angle of one vector. See, now this one is clearly saying it's the angle between two vectors. And I'm not going to worry about this so, other formula. We're just going to stick with this one and deal with it. So, find the angle theta between the vectors. And what I'm going to do is draw a little picture. One, two, one, two, three. And I know it comes from the origin because those pointy things. Negative two, five, one, two, and then five will be up two more. And there's that one. Okay? So that's negative 2, 5, and this is 2, comma 3. And the problem's asking for this. That's going to be our answer. Well, if we follow this formula, cosine of our angle is going to equal u dot product v. So remember, we just multiply these together. We get negative 4. Multiply these together, we get 15. And that's going to be 11 all over. Now look at the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. That's why I drew the picture. So this is 2 and 3. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's 9 plus 4, which is 13, which seems to be showing up a lot. So I got the magnitude of the, the first one I looked at. Now the order in which you get these doesn't matter. And now i got to find the magnitude of this. So that's negative 2, 5. So that's negative 2 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared, so 25 plus 4 is 29. 
take the square root, and now I know this is the square root of 29, but that belongs down here. Now, a lot of students can get to here, and then they really butcher it because they're not sure what to do with this. Now, what I like to do, rather than figure out what this is as a decimal and this is as a decimal, I just like to kind of do this in one step. So what I'm going to do, turn my good old calculator on, and I'm going to take 13 times 29, enter, and I'm going to take the square root of that number, and I get 19.4. So I get 19.4. Now the question is, how do I go from a weird looking thing like this to actually finding my theta? Well, I have to first turn this into a decimal. So I'm going to go 11 divided by 19.4.567. Let's go ahead and get real specific here. 0.567. What do I do now? Well, this is where I tell my calculator what to do. So I say, all right, calculator, I'm going to go second cosine 0.567, enter, and I got 55. If this rounded, it'd be 55.5. So I'm just going to say theta is 55.5 degrees. And if I just take a second and look at the picture and say, does that even make sense? Yep, it certainly does. All right, let's try letter B. So what do we do with this? Well, you better envision a 1 there, and you better envision a negative 1 there, and then you just drop them off. So it's 2, 1. And then you have V, which is negative 1, negative 3. And the first thing we're going to do is find the dot product. So that would be negative 2 plus negative 3, which is just negative 5. Now I'm going to start filling in this um, thing here a little bit. Again, I think it's a great idea to draw a little drawing. 2, 1. There it is. So this is 2, that's 1. And then I got negative 1, negative 3. So negative 1 would be right there. So this is negative 1, this is negative 3. So I'm going to start filling in this formula. Cosine of the angle I'm trying to find, which by the way, well we'll talk about that in a minute. Because the question is, is it this one or is it this one? We'll talk about that in a second. I already know what the dot product is, so that goes in the numerator. i got to find the magnitude of each of these. So I'm going to do this in my head. a squared is 4, b squared is 1, and I, I know that my magnitude is going to be the square root of 5 for this one. This is 9, 9 plus 1, which is 10, so my magnitude is going to be the square root of 10. And now I can just see that that equals negative 5 over the square root of 50. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to get after it. So second square root 50, 7.07 .07 makes sense. So that's negative 5 all over 7.07. .07. What's the square root of 49? 7. So the square root of 50 should be a little bit more. Well, now I've got to figure out what that decimal is. So I'm going to go negative 5 divided by 7.07. .07. And I get negative 0.707. So I get cosine of my angle is negative 0.707. Now i got to go second cosine. So second cosine, negative 0.707. I get 134.99. Let's just call it 135. So now let's go back to our drawing. What do you think you found? Well, this looks greater than 180. That's right. This looks less than 180. So these formulas are going to give you the lesser of the two as far as degrees between the uh, spinners go. So that's 135. Okay. Now, I didn't bring your attention to this, but it says the vectors u and v are orthogonal. What in the world? Uh, that's a fancy word. If the dot product is zero, well, it says prove that this and this are orthogonal. Well, that just means mess around with the dot product. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. 3 times 4 is 12, and we get zero. And we say, yay, it's orthogonal. 
But that's no fun. Let's take a little deeper dive and look at what's going on. I'm going to try to be somewhat accurate here. There's 2, 3. Negative 6, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's 3 and 4. And then if I did this. Oh, my drawing's not great. It's not great. But guess what orthogonal means? Look at it. It means they form 90 degrees. Forms a right angle. I'll throw that in for free today. All right. Enjoy that homework assignment, ladies and gentlemen.